Hello, today we'll be talking about long-term potentiation, long-term depression, plasticity, and memory. All these vague terms I'm going to explain today at the molecular level, and hopefully it will be simple to understand. So where memory forms is at the hippocampus, represented by this structure I drew here. Hippocampus. And I zoomed in here at the Schaefer's collateral, this region, the square. If you zoom in, as you see in this arrow, I'm going to focus on one of the synapses which are the many other ones, but I'm going to focus on one so we can explain what's happening there. We can see we have uh, the presynaptic pyramidal neurons, which are just any like any other neurons, but they're called pyramidal. And this is the presynapse, and this is called the dendritic spine, or the postsynaptic dendritic spine. As you can see here in a, in a big, um, a little bit exaggerated, uh, but you can see the major two receptors in orange. We have the um, ampere receptors in orange, and we can see that we have the NMDA receptors in green. So what's the, what's the difference between these two? The major difference between these two receptors is um, at the MPA receptor, we have four subunits, but I only drew two for simplicity. Um, those receptors only respond to glutamate, as you can see glutamate, at each subunit. When each of these subunits, the four ones, binds to glutamate, they create enough tension to open this channel and let sodium in inside of the cell. What happened when sodium entered the cell? Since they are positive, we're going to have depolarization. As you can see here, sodium influx inside of the cell, creating positive ions inside of the cell. Now I want to talk a little bit about uh, NMDA receptors, which has two different subunits. Unlike um, ampere receptors, one is called NR1 and one is called NR2. NR1 is associated with the glycine neurotransmitter, and NR2, NR2 is associated with glutamate. As you can see, we're zooming in here for AMPA, and we're zooming here for an MDA receptor. Now, one, one other different also other difference is that an MDA receptor they have this kind of blockage in this channel, which is um, it's a block by magnesium ion, as you can see it here in blue um, lining. This, there's this blockage that's very important I'm going to talk about after, uh, after a little bit. So long-term potentiation. That means we have the strength in the synapse, and that's how we kind of remember things from memory. We strengthen that synapse that we can remember certain things that we saw before. So I'm going to um, start from the beginning. What's going to happen in the long-term potentiation? At the presynaptic level, we have a lot of action potential or EPSPs in a very high frequency, almost like 100 Hertz. So a lot of this depolarization or action potential um, makes uh, AMPA receptors allow a lot of sodium inside, which actually, after all this sodium comes inside, you can see here the, at the bottom of the page, we have a lot of positive inside of the cell, which, um, which cause, um, which cause um, repulsion of the magnesium channel on the and then the A receptor, as you can see here, is getting out. So what happens when we, when we get the magnesium channel out? We have end blockage, which leads to the sodium and calcium influx inside of the cell here. So we have now high levels of calcium. Now, we have two kind of proteins that actually plays a really big role um, when they act on calcium. The first one is called um, CAN-K which is a kinase, CAN kinase 2, and we have calcineurin protein, which is a phosphatase. Remember, kinase gives a phosphate. That's why when you look at, the, at this blue smiley uh, person, you can see there is a phosphate added versus the sad person in red, calcineurin is a phosphatase, which means that they take out the phosphate. Now, when we have high level of calcium because of the influx from an MDA receptor, we will have CAN kinase activated because this guy has low affinity for calcium that means even very low uh, calcium concentration will make this kinase uh, active so what's gonna happen is can kinase is gonna grab the scissors and cut those vesicles associated with this mesh instead of the genetic spine and release those um, um, AMPA receptors of the dendritic surface, so we have a lot of EPSPs 
and a lot of action potential which lead to strengthening in the um, in the synapse of what is called LTP or long-term potentiation versus the other way when we have really low uh, calcium concentration in the dendritic spine we will have calcineurin which has high affinity that actually sends very very little amount of calcium and um, and act and it gets activated and as you can see it holds a glue which makes um, which 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 link back those channels back into the mesh and we have less amount of these uh, AMPA receptors uh, on the surface and that leads to long-term depression now I'm gonna go over it again since I think I, I missed one of the the can K I said it was low affinity that mean we need a lot of calcium to get activated, not low calcium, a lot of it. Okay, now I'm going to say the whole process again in summary. Um, uh, when EPSP reaches postsynaptic AMPA channels, open for sodium. As you can see here, sodium getting in and then depolarizes the cell and results in high frequency burst of action potential, which leads the coincidence detectors and that's why we call them coincidence, because this voltage expels magnesium outside and let calcium and sodium inflect inside of the cell. And then when we have a lot of calcium inside of the cell here, who is going to become active? CAM kinase 2, which, uh, which, which has low affinity, means we need a lot of calcium to make it active, and cut these vesicles and add a lot of these channels on top. And um, what's going to happen after the phosphorylation of these AMPA receptors, they will open for a longer time and it will bring a lot of them up the surface, which will have more EPSP summation and long-term potentiation. Um, like, uh, so all of this spine swelling, production of new protein and transcription make the synapse very strong and make us remember things easily. I hope that was uh, helpful. Have a nice day. Bye.